So we're here in the WAMDA booth with Alex Tusit of uh, Monetizer.com, a digital content company that a company that helps digital content companies enter the Middle East market. Um, Alex used to work for Trevian, so we're going to chat a bit about gaming sectors today. Alex, how are you? Uh, I'm very fine. I'm glad to be here on ArabNet. It's an amazing place. Uh, it's uh, just exciting to see all these people here on board, and uh, I'm very happy here. Excellent. So let's talk about um, how, when Travian entered the region in 2007, how did they decide to do that? What was their strategy? Um, actually, they didn't have a real strategy to enter the market. Um, the, the game is out there in 40 languages and all of a sudden uh, there are some guys from Egypt requesting an Arabic version. And doing an Arabic version per se for an online game, due to the specialties of Arabic content going from right to left instead of left to right, writing, uh, it's not per default so easy. So these guys were requesting the version and they said, okay, we do it. And all of a sudden, once they have created Arabic content, there were a million players in three months. Amazing stuff. It's huge. Um, based on Trevian's success, how do extra regional gaming companies now see the region and, and what is their strategy moving forward? Uh, ever since 2007, Basically, for two consecutive years, uh, there was uh, not really competition for Travian. And then a couple of companies, they found their ways in. It's, uh, it's tough to find your way in as a uh, foreign company. Simply, well, you can, you can buy the traffic, but you have to provide an Arabic version and, uh, uh, of your product. Otherwise, you will not be succeeding. Uh, you have to have some partners, because all the gaming business is very much related to revenue shares, partnership. The region is not per se made for partnership. They, they rather keep everything for themselves. But they're, they're, everybody's pushing from Europe, from Asia, from the US, everybody wants in the region. And uh, the potential is huge. Uh, last year, they were the, the biggest uh, uh, on TechCrunch, on all the big magazines, uh, online, on gaming. They all said there, there is something to get in the Middle East. So why were these games so popular? Why was there no competition? Is it just because the sector was so, so young? Or was it something specific about the games? Um, the sector is still pretty young. I would say it's not even 10 years old. Uh, the, the first browser game, uh, I have to say browser game, which is a multiplayer. It's very important. The success of all these games, it's multiplayer, it's community based. It's about interaction and competition. And uh, if you play for yourself, it's no fun. If you play against others, uh, it's real fun. So th this is what they really like, uh, the, the, the users. This is the success. Do you advise companies entering the region to go straight towards social gaming? Um, yes, definitely. Uh, but only go, go straight to the social gaming because there's uh, a lower amount of competition actually in the games itself. Only come here if you want to bring Arabic content. All the rest you, you, you touch the surface, it's like a, a, a big iceberg, you see the tip of the iceberg, but all the revenues below there, you can only gain them if you bring Arabic content. It's very important. But it's not necessarily about localizing the content of the game. I guess Travian did not localize the topics, the focus, it was just about the language. It, it's definitely, you, you can do it, um, but Travian did not simply because of the internationalization strategy that they were following in. So you cannot create the, the same tribes uh, or different tribes for each country. Uh, so people are suggesting it to me and do this, do that. But this company, they cannot manage because it's one game, 45 languages, 160 million uh, registered users. Don't change it for individuals. But if you only approach the Arabic market, yes, why not? Make it a little more Arabic than you would ever expect and get some insight from the people. Go there, go to Saudi Arabia, it's an interesting market, it's an interesting surrounding and uh, see what the people are doing and uh, they need entertainment. They have nothing to do, they cannot go to the cinemas, there are no cinemas in Saudi Arabia. That's true. Um, talk to me about, you know, just uh, in the future you're looking down the pipeline looking at mobile gaming, social gaming, um, massive multiplayer online games. What's exciting to you? What do you think we're going to see in the next year? What would you like to see in the next year? Um, well, it's not about me, what I would like. Um, what is obviously 
coming is uh, the free-to-play uh, model for uh, or the freemium model for mobile games. I mean, mobile games is such a hype. The platforms are available. The platforms have uh, very high rates of processing power. Uh, you can have great games on there. Everything will be multiplier and uh, ubi ubiquitous. I mean, everywhere you go, you wait for the bus, you play a game. So it's, it's so amazing. And uh, the free-to-play model is just uh, the, the, the best model that you can have for the gaming because uh, you only pay if you want to pay. It's amazing. Alex, thanks for chatting with us at Wanda. You're more than welcome.